Schmattlaken here with Nicole and Krieg. Today we're back in Leven, the home of the Bakihus. Thank you all so much for liking, commenting and subscribing to our channel and a special thanks to everybody who has supported us on Kofi. We are so grateful. Thank you. This is why we're here today. Yeah. And we're just stepped down at the beach. And what a lovely specimen. Oh, <laughs> a lovely example. It is just perfect. Let's pick it up. Okay. A little sandy. Yeah. <laughs> that's perfect. That's a good shape, isn't it? That's, <laughs> kind of, that's exactly the kind of thing we're looking for. Uh -huh. We came to this beach because we know there's quite a lot of shells here. So this one may have to stay here it's a little bit broken but i think well we'll, we'll take it with us yeah. just now and see what else we can find Ooh, lots of little treasures it's like a breadcrumb trail look they are just perfect Just waiting for us. Awesome, that's really cool. There's so many of them as well. Yeah. And they're all really quite nice and white. Now we'll just have to wash them, give them a good clean and soak. And then they're ready to do something with. Ginger beer jar, but we're not after that. Yeah. So I found a couple of shells already. One is totally overgrown with like keel worm, but it's a really cool piece. Is that the one there's more keel worm than there is shell? <laughs> yeah, I'll turn it around and you can see it. And what then, a life that shell must have. And a really, really huge limpid shell. It's like a little tower. Cool. <laughs> and I found this bit, and I don't know what it is. It's really light, so it almost feels like a bit of bark, but it has a really, really lovely pattern on it. So if you come close, maybe you get to see it. It's so cool, it's really nice. I think what we have here is, yeah, it's a bucky or a whelk shell. As anyone who's seen us here before will know, this is the home of the bucky hoose. Very big. Yeah, they are big, aren't they? They really are. Where's the other one going now? Ah, here. And I think they both look whole. Cool. No. Oh, not quite. No. Let's pop them down there and we'll have a wee look. They're perfect to be hung up. They've already got holes in them. Yeah, they're really cool. Mm -hmm. Really nice things just in and off themselves. Yours is really nice and bright. Yeah, it's a nice white one. I think we should maybe take that one. Yeah. It's really nice in the inside as well. Interesting shapes. Yeah. Sorry, I'm, I'm struggling here because I'm holding these little <laughs> shells as well. I'm multitasking.
There's certainly plenty of shells around, aren't there? Yeah. They're so cute. It's really tiny. It's a bit sandy now, so there we go. We'll leave the sand here. Yeah. <laughs> we don't need the sand. Yeah. Okay, so Nicole's just found something that stands a good chance uh -huh. of being our find of the day. Yeah. Oh, that's pretty, pretty I awesome. I thought it was a piece of shell, but it's not. Oh, oh, oh my goodness. Look at it. An amazing piece of art glass. <laughs> this is an amazing piece of glass. Uh, I think we'll make something out of that uh, and put it in the shop. It's a really, really rare piece. I mean, you found the red and black splattered piece before. Yeah. But this is like a rainbow, like a peacock piece. Yeah, that's really cool. <laughs> it's really nice. Not sure if I can park with it, actually. It's oh a yeah. Shell. I hope it's uh, I hope it's whole. It's kind of half partially covered in okay. sand. Ah yeah 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 yeah. It's really nice. Shall we see if it's whole? Yep. That looks pretty good to me. Yep. <laughs> That's lovely. It is, isn't it? Yeah. It's like from a picture book. <laughs> so the last time we here we found a cord marble. What do you think your chances are? Mm, looking at the beach it looks really sandy so chances finding a marble on a sandy beach like today slim yeah but <laughs> yeah I mean everything's changed in this beach the last time we we're here this entire area was covered in uh, in seaweed the whole area was green with seaweed yeah yeah that's right yeah, yeah. and today it's just uh, it's full of fluffy sand there's obviously been some rough seas over the last wee while uh-huh so it's really cool here, you can actually see a lot of the stones from the old pier. Like if you look at the large pieces of concrete here, they're far too regularly shaped to be anything else other than man-made. So there used to be a harbour here, I'm assured. And I reckon this was part of what would have been the uh, the pier or maybe even harbour walls but these are concrete blocks but they extend along the length of where we can see the old posts There is always so much to choose from to talk about in the places that we visit, and Leaven is no different. We already spoke about it as a Victorian seaside holiday resort when we looked at the Bucky House and where Cod Marbles come from, but Leaven has ancient roots and there are many stories that can be told about this place. Even the name of this place is interesting. The name Leaven is said to come from the language of the Picts, that is the people who occupied North and East Scotland until the 9th century. First mention of the Picts occurs in Roman records from 305 AD, and before that the Romans referred to all the peoples of Scotland as Caledonians. Whether Picts, Caledonians and others existed alongside one another is not made clear in early Roman accounts, though it is now widely accepted that the people of the west of Scotland intermarried and almost certainly fought and collaborated with the Picts and Scotland's other tribes to push Roman occupation south from the Antonine Wall at around 162 AD and then later during raids of Roman fortifications at Hadrian's Wall around 180 AD. The Antonine Wall cuts across central Scotland from the River Clyde in the west to the River Forth in the east, marking the Roman Empire's short-lived occupation this far north. We look across that ancient border today when we cast our eyes south towards Edinburgh from Leven across the River Forth. It was once thought that the Picts vanished from history because they and the Scots were wiped out by Irish tribes, though this is no longer considered plausible. Early reports by Romans describe the cooperative nature of the people living north of Hadrian's Wall, 
This, in combination with accounts from 700 AD that point to intermarriage between Irish Celts and Pictish leaders, have led to agreement that these groups merged peacefully enough through trade and intermarriage over many years before emerging unified as the nation of Alba under King Kenneth I around 845 AD. The Picts left no written accounts describing their way of life, their poetry, their songs or stories, but they did leave many carved stones, and these, especially later period stones from the 8th and 9th centuries, have given some hints about the way they lived their lives. One of these stones is known as Meagal 22. The stone was discovered, along with others, in the aftermath of a fire that destroyed Meagal Parish Church on March 28, 1869. The stone features a central figure flanked by two animals. Our logo is derived from the central figure, carved into this ancient stone over a thousand years ago. It may be that the figure is syncretic, formed of and representing the meeting of two sets of ideas, one steeped in Celtic beliefs and the other representing the growing influence of Christianity in Scotland at this time. In any event, this carving seemed to mirror our interests in history, Scotland and a mixing of the human and aquatic worlds. I will return again and again to say much more about the Picts and Scotland's other peoples in future videos. For now, I just wanted to introduce them briefly and partly to answer your questions about our new logo. Yeah, I just saw it. I'm going to go and get a second. <laughs> what we've seen is just over there. <laughs> yeah, basically this is exactly what we're looking for today. And there it is. Look at it. No inhabitant. Oh. Wow. That is such a beauty. Look. Is it the size of my... <laughs> Not quite, it's about the size of your face. Yeah, it's huge. And that's exactly what we came for, yeah, exactly what is, we're looking for. This is what we need for one of our five minute projects. Yeah, so you watch to the end, you'll see what we do with this. Uh -huh. It's quite cute, I think. Uh -huh. Wow, that's the biggest one I've ever found. Awesome, that's really cool. So today, I'm going to show you three craft ideas with shells that pretty much anybody can do. The first one is super easy. All you need is a jar, maybe a maison jar, and some battery powered fairy lights, and shells. So you've got your jar, and you've got your lights. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to put the lights in first, so I can then arrange the shells just kind of around the lights. Remember to leave the uh, battery pack outside. And we're going to use a couple of big shells. This is one we found in leaving the other day. We use some smaller shells. Oh, we've got some of these. Hey, yeah, the idea. It's really, really, really easy. Project number two, really easy too. Uh, I've opted for a shadow frame with a kind of driftwood beachy uh, appearance. And I'm just gonna fill that with some smaller shells uh, and then we'll put some white cardboard behind it. Uh, what you could also do is you could put a little bit of kind of crayon or watercolor and a, and a shade of blue uh, on it to make it look like water. Uh, or another idea is if you just put a little bit of kind of um, craft glue on this and then put some sand on it so it looks like the beach. So that's another idea. So, take these. All the little ones that we collected and leaving the other day. So we're just gonna put them in here. And then we've got some really lovely big ones. They're flat, so I'm gonna try and place them a little bit higher up and hope that they don't sink down. Um, see if they're all fit. Take these small ones. So 
that's our frame filled. Let's see what it looks like. So as you can see, if you were to paint that top bit blue, that would also look really nice. We're keeping it natural today. Um, that's entirely up to you. The third idea is a little bit more fiddly, but I think it'll still be achievable for most people. What we've got is a nightlight. Now we uh, opted for one that uh, goes on and off automatically uh, depending on the light, but if you want one uh, that you can switch on and off, then you'll, you'll just order that in from any kind of online retailer. And then the other thing is you're going to need a big shell. Now we've got this one. Um, and also, this is the one that we found in Leaf, but we actually found it's too big for our project. So we're just going to keep that for display. So I'm going to use super glue, but you can use any other kind of craft glue or maybe a glue gun. It really depends on how much time you have. Um, and the trickiest bit is really to keep the shell in place uh, when the glue is drying. So we can see that the shell's really just resting on the four corner points of that little night light. So that's where I'm going to put the glue. Okay. And because it's super glue, it should, it should <laughs> stick might have to apply a little bit of extra glue once it's uh, set. So that's us done then. Three easy crafts with shells. See you next week, Friday 7pm GMT time.